Hey everyone! Welcome to the third season of the Daily Elastic Byte and this time we're going to focus on observability. So let me let me share my screen and start the presentation. We won't have a lot of presentation just to get the logistics up and running. So um, as usual for the next three weeks we will have a 10 minute session, 10 to 15 minutes every day before lunch. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet you can do so at community.elastic.co in the EMEA virtual group um, and for the whole session throughout the three weeks we're going to use a reactive Spring Boot application as an example and we will start with a kind of bare bones application and then add features over time to make it more observable. Uh, you can follow the repository along uh, under the URL. I will also share everything later on in the in the YouTube URL and if you have any questions like feel free to create an issue in the GitHub repository, comment on the YouTube video or just um, go to discusselastic.co and ask for the questions. And yeah with that we can pretty much already get started. Um, so I want to like just take a quick and initial look at the application and today's goal is to add JSON logic um, to our application, to our Spring Boot application and then consume everything via FileBeat. So in order to do so, let's open an IDE. This is my Spring Boot project. As you can see here, it's a, it's a Gradle-based project. And these are the, the main classes. The interesting part here is that I just have a product, which is our entity we're gonna take a look on. Uh, you can see here, it will be in the index products. You can see the standard annotations for Spring Boot applications to map this field. So you don't need an index template. Um, and based on this product, you have repository classes and we do have a product repository, which extends from the reactive repository to make sure that everything is reactive. Uh, for example, we have a custom find products method in here uh, that basically returns a list of products. So the other interesting part here is the, the product controller. So again, this is just a CRUD application. Um, so we can create a new product, we can retrieve a new product, we can delete it, and we can search for it. So those are the JSON-based APIs, basically. And there's also one main controller with an HTML page. And what we can do now and go ahead here is we can just build our application. So this runs a few tests. So I have a, a couple of tests here to just make sure the behavior runs as expected. Uh, I think it's like eight tests in total, so it's not super big, but it's enough to prove a point. And you could just saw quickly here, there's a boot job being built. So if we run an ls on boot libs, you see that there's our, our ready-made jar file that we now could copy into a Docker container or whatever and get up and running. So we can do this by running this command and you wait a second, everything starts up. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, and you can see here, I'm running against the 7.15 cluster. And Netty is started because this is a reactive Spring Boot application. It's not starting a Tomcat container or anything like that. And my Spring Boot application now is up and running. We can now just run a curl on localhost on this port. And we see that there's some HTML being returned. So it might be easier to just open this up in a browser. In our browser, we see that we basically have a list of products that are being indexed. This is something I already indexed. Uh, but we could just use a curl command to do the same. Uh, one moment. Oh, this is a search, sorry. So this is what I'm really searching for. Um, we can just put a new product at this URL. Uh, this is the JSON payload and the JSON payload is also being returned once the product has been created. We could now delete it, we could update it. Um, or we could run our search. Uh, for example, in this example, we could search for the term wonderful and see that our product gets returned. And if I include a typo in here or a term that is not part of our data, it's not. So all of this is using the reactive repository uh, in the background and querying the Elasticsearch node that is up and running. So this is the, the basic setup. The interesting part now is we have a log file uh, like this one. This is colored because it's the console output. Um, I could now have a special endpoint to trigger an exception. This is mainly to show you a point. Uh, we get an internal server error because an exception is being returned. Uh, but the interesting part is in the logs. 
um, because you can see here that uh, a wild runtime exception occurs, that's the exception that I added in there, and you see the classic Java exception being in a weird format that is really, really hard to pass. And a common workaround to this problem is to just go ahead and run everything or lock everything as JSON. And this is what we're going to do. In order to do so, uh, there's a known library called ECS Logging Java. It's part of Elasticsearch. It's a Java dependency. You can just include in your own Java project. And you have a couple of different formatters for all the common logging frameworks, which makes sure that JSON is basically emitted as the log format. Now, if we want to include this in our product or in our Spring Boot application, we can first configure the log file name, which I set to be in my temp directory, which you would probably not do in a live application. And you have to make sure that you add your logback configuration. And in this example, I'm logging to the console, but the console logging will not be JSON, but I will also log to a JSON file or into a file, and that will be JSON. So with this configuration up and running, we can basically take another look into the temp directory and we see that there is already a JSON file. So if we cat this and we pretty print this for JSON, we can go to the bottom and we see that the runtime exception is now locked into a single field. And that makes it searchable and more maintainable. So the whole event, which was multi-line in our text-based logging is now really a single event in our JSON. And now that we have JSON logging, it's really easy and quick to get FileBeat-based logging up. So this is my output over here for FileBeat configuration. And the important part is to have those inputs. So we say, where's my JSON file? Uh, you have to make sure that you consider this to be a JSON file. You have to make sure that all the keys are also in the root part, so in the, in the yeah, root object of the whole JSON. Um, and you can add processes optionally. Uh, as this is like uh, running locally, we will only have a uh, host metadata, but nothing about cloud or Docker containers, which will also change over time. And then we can configure outputs. Uh, we can configure outputs for Elasticsearch, so everything gets indexed. And we can also configure outputs to, to lock it into the console. That's usually a nice approach uh, if you want to make sure that your logging is correct. So if we now run FileBeat, we have the FileBeat YAML configuration that is also part of the um, GitHub repository. So you can just take the exact same line over here and run it. Uh, we will start FileBeat. Everything will be set up and running. And you can see here that the connection to Elasticsearch has been established. So our only task left now is to basically trigger the exception a couple of times. Um, see if there's anything locked in, in FileBeat itself. And go from there to our browser. So I always also have uh, Kibana up and running. So what we can do now, we can go to the Discover dashboard and see if there's any data being indexed. And these were basically the exceptions that I just created. And again, we can see much more fields here because the file beat itself adds some more information and um, it also converts everything into the ECS format, the Elastic Common Schema. We will get to that in another session. And you see here the host name where this was logged. You can see here the whole exception stack trace in a, in a single field. Um, the error type, which is also useful for, for grouping. Um, the operating system, so I run an OS X locally, where the log file was read from, and also the service name, so you could configure each Spring Boot application to have a different service name. And yeah, with a quite or with a few lines of configuration for FileBeat, plus uh, adding a single dependency uh, in your Java project, if we take a look at the build Gradle file, uh, you can see that this is basically the whole dependency that you have to add to your Spring Boot application to make sure that everything is there. You basically end up with JSON logging that is easy to read with a file beat and then can be sent to the Elastic Stack. Yeah, that's that. That was our session today. Um, if you have any questions, again, I can just repeat. Uh, don't hesitate to open them up in, in the GitHub repository or on our Discuss forum. And we will meet again tomorrow with the second part of this, where we focus a little bit more on um, application metrics uh, instead of log files there to make sure that we get all of the data of a single application into the Elastic Stack.
See you tomorrow.